questions of her, questions for me just coming out of nowhere. I guess we're going to see. All right, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for watching this exclusive interview that we are recording on TikTok over on YouTube. Make sure to follow our TikTok page. We're doing interviews, New Music Fridays, everything there all the time. Now, today we have a very special guest. We have matching shirt colors, matching background colors. And uh, we're, we're both, uh, her longer than me, but we're both on the TikTok platform as well. Uh, we have Miss Dev Lemons, the face of the wonderful and ever so popular Song Psych series. Finally, Melon Lemons. Now all we're missing is Brendan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you me. for coming through. So, Thank oh, please. Stop. Yeah. All right. Um, so, so listen, just for anybody who's uninitiated, because uh, I, I assume that a lot of my audience is not adjusted to the TikTok platform yet or what's going on over there, even though I'm over there. And, you know, I, I, I assume that because whenever I post anything I do over there onto my Twitter or my Instagram, you know, 50 percent of the comments are like, fuck you, Anthony, this is cringe. Why are you doing this? You're ruining your career. This is the worst thing that you've ever done. So I, I, I presume that there are a lot of people there that don't necessarily get the humor, understand some of the memes there or, or sort of like get the potential of what you can do on TikTok, that it's not just like, you know, um, uh, teenagers dancing to songs, even though there are lots of very cool, you know, versions of that um, on the platform. So, you know, explain to everybody watching who might be unfamiliar what you do on the platform with Song Psych and, and how that originated. Yeah, of course. So with Song Psych, the whole goal is to sort of make music theory as accessible as possible and like, you know, make it easy to understand whether you have a background in music theory or you have no idea like w what it even is. So that's the goal, trying to take the pretension out of it because there's a lot of people who like to make it more complicated than it really has to be. And how that came about is, um, well, during quarantine, I was teaching it to myself anyway, because like, I needed a hobby like I'm I'm gonna make music yeah but like I should probably learn you know more about it and instantly fell in love with music theory even though it you know was hard at first but once I understood it I was like wow so yeah and I was also a video editor at the time and for this company called good content shout out good content and my boss was like hey you know TikTok's launching this educational program got any ideas and I was like yeah music theory let's let's teach it to everyone and, and the rest is history um I I agree with uh you know sort of like your objective and goal there I mean it comes out very clearly in a lot of the content that you do in terms of like talking about a uh, hammer vibrato or um, talking about the types of chords progressions, you know, used in tracks, um, you know, but what would you say is sort of like your own personal mental process when it comes to, okay, this is a complicated idea that a lot of people aren't necessarily exposed to. How do I make it sound fun or silly or just like really easy to comprehend? You know, what's, what's the simplification process in your mind to, to help people kind of get it? So, I mean, the, where I'm lucky in that sense is that like, I've never really had any formal training in music theory. Like I'm pretty self-taught aside from talking to people who like go to Berkeley school of music, who, you know, are script consultants on the thing. So, you know, I'll just like, t it helps to, cause I talk through it with them too. And I'm like, okay, like this is the definition, but like, is it right if I say it like this? And then they'll be like, you know, yeah, or no. And <laughs> so it's sort of like trial and error um with all that so yeah it's good because i'm used to like dumbing things down for myself to understand so 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 that's um the, what you're describing here almost reminds me of like how i was trying to make my way in radio a little bit um just sort of like you know working at this media company 
and coming up with an idea for a show or a concept or something. And they have sort of like allowed you to kind of run with this. And there's like production support and everything behind like pretty much every video that you're making week to week. Yeah, the whole team. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, how many people in terms of like editors, co-writers, just uh, others kind of consulting you on music theory are, are there... Uh, I, I guess from your own perspective, does it seem like a lot to be behind what ultimately ends up being like a minute long video? Honestly, sometimes like I it's grown so much because we didn't like I don't think we really expected it to grow this quickly. So it I mean, it, it really started out. The whole beginning was just like me and my boss, Peter. And then I was like, Peter, I, I can't do this all by myself. I I don't have any training. Like we at least need someone to like make sure I'm right and like edit the video so I can focus on like coming up with the ideas. And he was like, yeah. So then we added on Kai and our editor, Jono. And then um, we got another script consultant because Ta Kai tore his ACL. So now we have two script consultants and we also expanded onto YouTube. So now Jono and Jacob edit. So there's like, a team of like six people. And we also have like a legal consultant now who's mm -hmm. also named Peter. So it's a big team and it feels like a grand team for just these, you know, little baby videos, but it's all worth it. Cause I think it pays well, off. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely expanding. Like, uh, what what ultimately is you know uh, good contents kind of goal with like continuing to grow the song psych series like is it ultimately to keep building it as this tiktok phenomenon or take it like off site to somewhere else eventually i mean obviously like you just said it's on youtube already but like are there other sort of like content di divisions that are being planned at some point like doing a podcast or i know you've done interviews as well under the song psych name too yeah, so we're definitely trying to expand the YouTube. It's like really hard. We weren't expecting it to be so hard, but it's taking a while. So, I mean, <clears throat> that's like where most of our energy is going. But eventually, I would love to figure out a way to do a podcast. We're just trying to figure out like an angle to sort of take it because, like, you know, we can't use songs unless we get like legal clearance. And that's like a big task. So, I mean, yeah, we're also actually looking into expanding to Twitch. We're not sure when, but we're, it's on the back burner. I, I get this question a lot because of, you know, what I do, but the older that I get and the more established in like exactly what I'm doing, I feel like it gets harder to answer because I'm, I'm not in the position that I used to be when I was just beginning what I was doing in 2008. And, you know, that question is like, uh, you know, I'm really passionate about music. I want to talk about music. I want to talk about X, Y, Z. But, you know, I, how do I build my own brand? How do I start doing videos? How do I get my name out there? Like from your own perspective, as somebody who's doing exactly that, like what some people's dream job would be, but as a younger person who, you know, didn't try to force themselves through the traditional media ringer in the way that I did. Like, what is that advice from your perspective? Like if, you know, you are a young person, but if you were a young person who isn't in the position that you're in now, like where would you see yourself starting if you wanted to start getting your voice or your perspective out there on new music or anything else? Hmm. That's a good question. Cause I mean, honestly, I feel like with stuff like TikTok, like it's been, I feel like it's never been easier to sort of get your content in front of like so many people that like don't already follow you. Like it's built to show you content you've never seen before, which I think is like really cool. So, I mean, even though like as time goes on, it's like getting more oversaturated with like all these content creators, like I don't really think it's ever too late to just start posting. Like you could also do YouTube it's going to be much more of an uphill battle, but it's, you know, it's probably more sustainable. Um, but I mean, I guess like the biggest thing is like, if you want to try to figure out like what your niche is, like I would look at it more as like what your goal is like through your content. Like what do you want people to, you know, take away from it and 
Like, what are you trying to accomplish? Which I feel like sounds like such an obvious answer, but I had never really thought about it that way until, you know, it just like happened. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, <clears throat> there's still, I think, so much more room to grow on the internet because like there are so many people who just aren't online yet across the globe. And mm-hmm. a lot of the people who are online currently are easily duped and don't necessarily understand like the full, but like there's so many people who are on the internet that all they do is they just go on Yahoo news, you know, and they're, they're just like, you know, throwing up like boomer comments in the comment section, or they're just like going on Facebook to, you know, uh, uh, post a minion meme, you know what I mean? So it's like, we're, we're, we're eventually going to reach a point where the, uh, you know, me, my generation, I'm sure there will be some other kind of technological curve that we'll all fucking suck at and we'll all be trash and you guys will, you know, take us out to pasture and shoot us and put us out of our misery. But, uh, (laughs) you know, by the time I'm 60, we'll at least be like a little bit more technologically savvy. You know, we'll I'm sure we'll be angry at the fact that, you know, we're still looking at screens and all y'all have been sort of like born with chips in your brains and you don't even need to log on or anything. Um, But, uh, (laughs) but um you know, we're, we're, we're not even at the point where most of everyone out there is sort of like internet and technologically savvy. So there's still room for growth. You know, the potential audience out there that you could reach for talking about anything, um, you know, there's, there's still so much like upward mobility, even if you do log online, which is to a degree that, you know, if you, if you see TikTok, yeah, it's getting more saturated. If you see YouTube, yeah, it's going to get more saturated, but it's only going to be a matter of time before there are more platforms and there are more platforms specifically about certain things. Um, because look at, at one point, like, uh, I thought YouTube was like the be all end all, but then you know, other social media apps came and then TikTok came and then a whole bunch of other, you know, other apps are going to be coming into the future. So it's, it's really only a matter of time, you know, and, and I think it says a lot that, um, uh, that TikTok is uh, specifically a, a Chinese platform because we, we haven't really had that much of her, that deep of a conversation, you know, as like social media users yet of what other countries are going to be sort of like putting out there as far as like competitive apps, You know, it's like it's now China's just stepping into the game with like a really huge popular app. It's only going to be a matter of time before other countries that are sort of like, you know, either first world or developing are going to be coming out with apps that end up gaining some kind of popularity. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. And I feel like it's hard to like really think bigger in terms of like, yeah, what is next and sort of even try to think about and prepare for it because it's like, like, it's so hard to really no, like how long is TikTok going to be TikTok? Hmm. And like how, I think it's going to be interesting to see how the next platform does take influence from TikTok because like TikTok's definitely taken influence from like YouTube, I guess. And like definitely from stuff like MTV and from the radio and Hmm. even just like personalized ringtone craze of like the 2000s. Like it's unbelievable how it's just taken influence from all these things and just mashed it together. So like what comes next is big shoes to fill, but it's, it's definitely going to happen. You know, just to kind of break it down and give people, I guess, more of an idea as to like what else is going on on the platform. Like if you could, in so many words, how would you describe like the music community on TikTok? Because again, like your average person that knows nothing about the platform may just like, assume oh it's just like teenagers dancing or whatever but there's actually like a really robust community of musicians of singers writers who are like duetting each other and you see a string of like you know five different players sort of just like creating a full band you know for just like a very short moment but it ends up sounding really good um you know while uh, uh i'm also an instagram user and for years i've seen lots of great instagram musicians the the ability to sort of collaborate and cross over on the tiktok platform uh, makes it in a way wholly unique. I see a lot of those same musicians I've been watching for years on Instagram now like migrating over to this platform in order to kind of spread their brand and make videos and make content with other artists they've been watching from afar for years on other platforms. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. I feel like it's so hard to sum it up in one word because like there's literally 
anything you can imagine like even besides people doing live performances like there are like even just within like music education like there's so many djs that will do like sample videos and be like Mm. oh hello today we're going to talk about like this song and how it you know comes from this sample and we'll do it on the turntables and it's so cool and like literally anything you can think of and like there's more than one person doing it which is just so cool i mean and then there's like also obviously like the gatekeepers and stuff that are like oh now this song is viral Mm -hmm. but then they're making a video to it thus making it more viral (laughs) complaining about people making videos to make it viral like it's there's literally like everything uh speaking of virality what do you what do you think about astronaut in the ocean is it a bop or oh. is, is, is it a bop or is it a flop it's such a flop <laughs> it's such a flop i'm not even gonna filter it like no 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 music theory analysis of the of the song or it's just like i don't like his timbre oh really no what what, what, I, what don't you like about the timbre i just don't like like I don't know. Like I just, it just like it feels like someone's just like digging their finger into one of my brain folds and like twisting it. And and I, I don't like the beat. And I don't like and I. I just don't like it. Hmm. And that's that's about as much as I thought about it. But what I do like, but what brings me so much joy, are all of the remixes. <laughs> yeah, that, that yeah. awful vocal just over any instrumental. Yeah, to me, the the voice. I didn't say this in my video about it, but to me, the voice seems almost like a, 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 a almost like a huskier take on like a Drake type flow. You mm-hmm. know, like 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 if it like if if Drake were to hop on mic and and say, you know, what, I'm just going to try to sound like really manly right now. I'm just going to try <laughs> to sound as tough as possible. And, you know, just no, just no sensitivity at all. Um, you know, to, to me, that's what that sort of sounds like. It, it sounds like a cross of that, but whoever's rapping is also like a really huge fan of Eminem. You know, it's just, he, he, just, oh. he just really fucks with some Eminem, you know? Yeah. No, and, I definitely get that. I absolutely get that. You know, wow. I, I I don't want to hate on the guy too much though, because like <laughs> watching his social media, he does seem just like a regular dude. I I don't. Quite, I haven't even I haven't even seen his TikTok. Like I didn't even realize he was on TikTok. He's, he's, a little he's, bad. On, he's on TikTok. I mean, he's he oh. seems to be he seems to be handling it well. I mean, he should be. I mean, yeah, he's getting a lot of hate, but he has one of the most popular songs in the world right now. And yeah. mirac- and miraculously, he's Australian, so he's, he's like putting on for the Australian scene. So, oh, I didn't know that. So how many world famous Australian rappers are there? Like Oh my god. Like I now, now there's from, one. He sounds like he's from like the middle of Pennsylvania, like the <laughs> middle of it. Like You know, I, I I don't know if it's a bit performative on his part. I mean, obviously in the way that he raps, uh yes, but like when when I am watching him speak, he does his his accent is very light. It's a very light accent. He's he's probably from it's it's not a very thick Australian accent, but he's he's repping for the Australian scene. There you so, go. That's I mean, cool. Yeah, that 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 is cool. You know, it's as as corny as the song is, and as confusing as the popularity is, because like, at least from what I've seen going into his catalog, he has no albums. He <laughs> had he has just a handful of singles, and this one came out in like 2019. It's been on YouTube since 2019, and I guess it recently got like, you know. Um, signed with Electra and now it's kind of blowing up and people are just using it left and right on TikTok. I don't know. I mean, I feel like I feel like some of the people that were doing digging on Tramp Stamp should be doing digging into the Masked Wolf guy. <laughs> just to kind right? of Right because he came out of nowhere. Came really, really? came out of nowhere. I didn't, I didn't know that it came out in 2019. Like, like I really There's the, there is a version of the video on of the song on on YouTube from 2019. So it's it's been around for a little bit. Wow. Yeah, but now it's just kind of blowing up in a delayed sense. But may- maybe the label kind of picked it up as it was kind of getting a bit of virality. I I really have no idea. I wonder I whose no idea. idea. Like, who made it viral? Who was know. the person that had that brain blast? <laughs> I I really don't know. But that's but that's kind of like you were saying. That's kind of the beauty of the TikTok platform because it has this like potential to. And and this sort of leads into the next question I wanted to ask you. Um, just for anybody who might want to jump on there and do their own thing, um, it has this great potential to sort of like 
create this mass exposure, you know, for something that people just wouldn't have come across otherwise. But one thing that I like about your page that I personally, I, I struggle with myself on my own page is, um, you know, people engage with your content very regularly on there. But something that I found to be, you know, uh, strange and also slightly frustrating with the platform, and, and this probably comes from just my years of being used to YouTube and used to other platforms, but like the searchability on it is awful. Like if you ever want to find a certain something and you don't remember the account or you don't remember the hashtag or you don't remember where it is specifically, like it's impossible to find. And mm -hmm. if you're making a piece of content and let's say you have 400,000 followers and, you know, regardless of what that content is, you're like, okay, I'm going to upload this and I'm going to assume that it's going to reach all of my followers and uh, no, it will not like you know, sometimes it's a struggle on YouTube to make sure that, you know, your million plus people who are following you uh, see the thing that you're actually uploading. Sometimes it's even harder on TikTok. Like if something that you've put up is not like hitting out of the gate in terms of like reactions, uh, a great sort of like majority of your viewers or your followers are not even going to see it. But like I was saying earlier, um, you know, you have like a really great kind of regularity of engagement with a lot of what you do on Song Psych. So how do you sort of strike that balance where no matter what you're uploading for the most part, like, you know, your, your audience is engaging with it? Wow. I mean, like, honestly, it's nice to hear you say that because sometimes like I feel like the videos flop so hard. <laughs> like today we posted a video and it's like probably only has like 10,000 views or mm. something, but like, it's just so, I don't even know because it's so unpredictable. The algorithm's always changing. Like mm. just recently, it seems like they're promoting older videos. So like, you know, I feel like you don't have to worry as much about posting time, but then I posted a video today and it like, on my personal account and it got like a bunch of likes out of nowhere so i'm just mm. like how do they pick it like <laughs> no one knows and they don't tell you which is like mean kind of because i feel like they're always changing it to like funnel in all these different people yeah so it's like because even when we try to do songs that are like popular in the moment like sometimes they'll do really well but sometimes they'll kind of flop even though like the song was just trending but it's like lately we've been trying to like center around songs that have been out for a while and like are like sort of older like early 2000s mm. classics but are like trending now like we've been doing a lot of Britney Spears yeah. because Britney Spears everyone knows Britney Spears and a lot of her songs have been trending lately so it's like perfect. No, I, I, I think that's fitting because typically when when a certain era or a certain something or a certain sound is starting to hit that 20 year mark that's when it gets that critical reassessment sort of reaches that classic status mm -hmm. yeah so it's like what's good about that too is like it doesn't matter if like it's it doesn't go viral like white when right when the song is trending because like if it's in people's for you pages like a month later they're not gonna like they're gonna still know the song like whether it had trended or not yeah so. I, I guess that's a point I'll, I'll put up videos every once in a while and i've only been on for two months now or so but you know i'll put up videos and maybe like in a day it'll do 10k 20k or something and then i'll go back like weeks later i'll be like oh okay it actually has a lot more views now for whatever reason you know um but as you were saying uh it's nice to sort of like uh hear that validation that like i i really have no idea what the hell is going to pop off and when and and for what reason mm -hmm. and the moment that you think like oh, okay that's it i'll do that again and the yeah. second time you do it, it's like no mm -hmm. bad literally like we did a video on the Pixies on like a chord progression. I thought like, oh, this one's fine. It's gonna do like fine, I bet. It like, <laughs> it did so well. Like it got millions of views and I was like, wow. Like I didn't even like, what? Like why? Like it's a good video, but it's like, you know, like we do, it's not like necessarily so much better than all the other videos. It's just like, it really is so unpredictable. Yeah, I, th there is kind of like a, uh, a confusion, I guess, to what you upload and how it gets received and what gets received well. But but given that frustration, I, I guess, um, personally, what keeps you coming back to the platform then? 
You know, it's like, what, what's, what's the upside to that? Because that is a really frustrating thing. Honestly, like, I don't know. Everyone's had a different experience, <laughs> but I just think the community of people that like engage with my stuff are for the most part, really nice. I've never gotten so many nice things things said to me like in my life so it's like crazy all these people like even if it doesn't reach a lot of people like the fact that like I know at least one person saw this and they learned something so that's so cool and like even just one person just being like oh my god your videos are so cool it's like thanks say it again you know like (laughs) like it's just I don't know it just makes me really happy to know I taught someone something and like spread my love for music to other people and like, you know, help them look at it in a new way. Maybe as a, you know, personality and a creator and a voice online though, um, how do you conversely, if, and when the time comes deal with, uh, hate or controversy or drama around what you're doing too? I mean, you know, kind of pulling back to the, the, the Slowden reverb, uh, you know, thing that went down, Uh, the confusion over that terminology and chopped and screwed and so on and so forth, which became like almost like a, you know, uh, a debacle that kind of, you know, followed the brand for a little bit. Like, how did you kind of deal with that, overcome that and just like move on? And effectively at this point, you've kind of transcended past that. But, you know, what was your mental process kind of going through that whole situation? Oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, like people still commented about it. And I'm like, wow. I mean, I, I understand your frustration, but it's yeah, so like some people will hang on to anything forever. <laughs> yeah. And like, honestly, I mean, I remember waking up that morning and seeing like all these notifications and I was like, oh, wow, like people like my videos. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> on it. And, and like, it's like, oh my, I'm getting roasted. And like, at first I was just like really upset, but you know, Because the video in the first place, like, it wasn't centered around the history of Sloan and Reverb and Chopped and Screwed music. Although, obviously, I should have mentioned that DJ, it was heavily influenced by DJ Screw. That was just, like, I should have done more research. And I take full accountability for that. But at the end of the day, like, I really just, you know we the team huddled together we addressed it as fast as we possibly could and made a follow-up on like you know how are they different and like you know we obviously honored dj screw and like said he heavily influenced slow and reaver but at the end of the day if i would have mentioned dj screw in the be- in the initial video it a fraction of the people would have learned who he was like it got so much backlash that it elevated his name and his legacy more than I could have ever done initially. So it's like everyone kind of wins because so many people learned about DJ screw. I learned so much more about DJ screw than I would have on my own. And I like, I really like his music now that I know who he is and I checked out his stuff. Like, I've found music that I really enjoy now. So, you know, I still, people still get angry about it. But at the end of the day, I mean, the, like, do your research too. Like, we addressed it. Slater is not white. I didn't whitewash history. But I mean, yeah, it's, it's all a learning process. Just people, oh my God, the other day, we posted a video on Day and Night by Kid Cudi, and we said it was in B minor. And the amount of people, the amount of people said, um, you're wrong. It's an E minor. Mm-hmm. But it's not. <laughs> That's like the funny thing. Like, like people got so mad over that. Like the amount of outrage, the amount of stitches, <laughs> the video being like, sorry, but you're wrong. But then they're like... I'm not this time. Like, I'm actually right. Like, it is in B minor. Let's move on to uh, uh, your own music because you're a musician and a producer yourself. Um, you know, you just uh, released your EP Lemontopia. Uh, how long have you been making music? And, you know, when did you exactly decide to, you know, start kind of like doing this music thing on the side, which you're clearly trying to like almost grow beyond just like what, the popularity of song psych is 
Yeah, I mean, like, as a kid, like, I'd always, like, mess around with, like, the keyboard and, like, bought an electric guitar to impress this guy I met on Uvu video chat. And, like, it was just so, <laughs> like, <laughs> it was so, I never thought this is what yeah. I'd be doing. Because I was so, like, I was always a consumer of music. Like, I'd, like, music was, like, my main form of entertainment. But, like, I never thought that I would do the music until, like, I tried it out a little bit in high school. I'd, like, post it anonymously on Tumblr, like, trying to be the next, like, cyberbully mom club. And and then my friends from high school, like, found it and made fun of me. And then I gave up on it until I went to film school, realized no one gives a shit about letting all their creativity out and it's okay to do your thing and like you know try out different art forms so i said you know what i'm gonna blow off some steam i'm gonna make some music about about bad things in my life so then i made music under miss ipad people actually liked it which was like insane because i honestly think it sucks like it on it's it actually stinks like really bad and then, but that's because I was doing it all myself. Like I wasn't, there was no collaborative aspect of it. Like besides like my friend Kai mixing and mastering like some of the songs, like there was no back and forth. So that's why like with Dev Lemons, it's like, you know, lemons, they're never good by themselves. We got to collab with something to be good. Like a, like a water and some sugar in it. Mm. So it's been about a year since I, less than a year since I've been doing stuff under Dev Lemons. But since I've been like, actually, since I started Miss iPad, I think it's been like two years, three, maybe. Hmm. So too long. Don't read three years. And, you know, what are your aspirations for the stuff that you're like putting out ultimately? Like, are you hoping to kind of stay this? social media TikTok video musician producer phenom or are you hoping to get signed at some point or like you know like wh wh where do you see this going in five years from now it's such a like I don't even like here's the thing I'd love to get signed and be funded to do this but what I love so much about like doing it sort of independently is that I feel like it does feel more genuine and like I really want to inspire other people to make their own music and post it online, like try to do things independently at first and like not worry about getting a label right away mm. and just, you know, being your real self, not worried about getting all these fancy photo shoots or whatever, which would be nice. I'd love to have a fancy photo shoot, but at the same time, it's nice to just do my own thing. I feel like it does come off more genuine and I'm scared of losing that if I sign with a label. Although I would love to not have to be on social media all the time. Hmm. That that would ultimately <laughs> be the gift. Sign to a label, get someone else to be on social media all the time, please. Yes, I never want totally. to be on social media again. Beg of you. Anything. <laughs> but it's also like, I think I would, you know, I like it too. Social media. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I was going to say, because, you know, you obviously do your musician thing. You do your song psych thing. But then on top of it, you do have these little, I followed song psych. And then it was from there that I got in my For You page, your, your weird little manic energy, like <laughs> crazy, crazy accounts <laughs> where oh. like, I was, you know, honestly, like I was flipping and then I saw, you know, I saw you and I was like, oh, okay, cool. A Dev Lemons video. And <laughs> then all of a sudden, I don't know what, it's like a Death Grip song playing. And then it's like fast motion. You're doing this. Yes! Oh, I, was like, I was like, what the hell is happening? What's going on? And it was like, you know, it was probably late at night. So I was freaked out by it. And I was like, what is happening? So I was, I was ready to hear, do, do you recognize this song? And it's like, I wasn't ready to like. <laughs> you know, honest, honestly, it gave me very much like, like haunted dead girl energy. Like, you know, if like if that was like a ghost in your room and it was just like, you know, so, <laughs> so, so, so what drives you to do these little like side videos where you're just giving off just, just pure manic energy, you know, you're just like, I'm just going to be a total internet shit poster. You sometimes you just got to let it out. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's so nice to have an account on social media where I just don't 
give a flying shit about what I post and I can just post <laughs> literally whatever I want. I don't have to worry about like if it does well. Like I literally don't care. I just plain shit post. It's so nice. And I, you know, it's so fun because it's also, it feels like a social experiment. Like what is someone going to think when they see me moving to throbbing gristle? No, I, I agree. That's, you know, that's why, that's what I think a lot of people don't get when they're confronting me online. They're like, Anthony, you're a 35 year old man. What are you doing? Why are you, why are you, uh, uh, posting this Weezer lyric out of the blue that says pump it into me, daddy. And it's just like, I, I have, I have to, <laughs> have if I, to. if I do, I'm just acting normal all day. And then it's just like, and, and then, and then my job is, you know, I, I did this job to not do a nine to five. And if I'm not able to go on to Twitter and, and, post pump it into me daddy with, with no context <laughs> whatsoever if, no, I'm not, if, if i'm not what? able to do that then I'm, i might as well just be just you know working the nine to five why not it would be just as soul sucking exactly you know, you, pack you, it up you and go to that, the cubicle you need that you need that release you need mm -hmm. and you know just like at the cubicle you you have the you have the coworker birthday party where you know you might be able to just like jump in and be like hey, hey what's up Pump it into me, daddy. Pump, pump, the, <laughs> pump, the, exactly, pump, the, but... pump the cake into me. <laughs> so, and, you know, you'd probably get the same reaction, but sure. it'd be from people in real life. And really, you know, what's more scary? Some random person with like a no profile picture saying, what are you doing? Who Who's giving you? Who's telling you to stop? Hmm. Really? You know, Ooh. it's like, I don't know. People are so weird online. They get like weird. Like it's as if they don't want you to enjoy anything. Well, not, not only that, but I, th I think honestly, it's a service that people need to be thanking me for because like, look, come to terms with who I am and what I'm doing. This is mm -hmm. what, this is what 20 years on the internet does to you. Like, yeah. You're looking at the future, buddy. Like, exactly. like, like this is what, this is what you're going to be doing in 10 to 15 years. And look, when you are doing it, when you're the one on Twitter, when you're 35 posting, pump it into me, daddy, no one's going to judge you for it because I had already done it. Everyone's going to be yeah. like, oh, and he's just blowing off some steam, just shit posting, you know, <laughs> just, just posting, pumping into me, daddy. Just like, like I'm s that's such an interesting point because like, what is going to be? <laughs> I feel like it's like as generations keep happening, like <clears throat> we just get more absurd. So like what's going to be absurd to a generation that is, you know, main form of humor is absurdity, like already, like what is going to phase anyone anymore? I, I really, that ha is I really normal. have no idea. If, like I, that would be normal to me. I'd be like, yeah, exactly. Like Twitter as a whole, like, I tried for so long to build a following on Twitter before I moved to TikTok. Mm -hmm. And like, I would think of like jokes. I was in a late night comedy class at freaking school. I thought I was like pulling out these zingers, like, you know, topical give, give me, give me, jokes. Give me a zinger. Give me a, you have to give me an example though. Give me oh. like, what's, what's your best zinger you remember? Um, it doesn't have to be one that was received well, just one that you love, your favorite zinger okay. that you did. So here's a good zinger. I didn't yeah. turn this into class, but <laughs> this is my favorite. Kept, tweet, kept the best one to yourself. Got it. Yeah, it was topical too. Got it. No nipple November. Everybody tear them off now. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was my joke. And it was in November. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. I wish uh, I'd turned that into class. But yeah, I mean, watching everything that I've, you know, seen occur over the past decade and a half or so, not just like being on my own platform, but, you know, being a student of like uh, uh, the early days of the 4chan platform when I was like in, in college. I mean, a, a lot of that very absurd humor has now just become normalized. It's now just everywhere. It's everywhere yeah. on the Internet. I mean, it's it's just kind of the standard now. And, um, you know, that's, uh, as you were saying, it's like, where is it going to evolve from here? Mm -hmm. Exactly. 4chan. 
Oh my yeah. God. Okay. So this, I actually have a question now that you mentioned 4chan. Yeah. Um, so I was doing an outline for a death grips iceberg video mm. and one of the layers mentioned moo or mew, mm -hmm. but I wasn't really sure. Do you have experience with mew? Like why is that in the death grips iceberg aside from people really liking death grips on it? Um, why, why is it in the death grips iceberg? Yeah, like, why is that a part of it? I mean, I would say that um, <clears throat> the music board on 4chan, Chan culture, and image board culture was still at the point that Death Grip started very relevant and very popular and very much like the main vein of weirdo music, weirdo culture, weirdo art. All of that has since like matriculated to all over the internet, you know, but like at the point that Death Grips was getting popular 2011, 2012, it was still very big. It was still very relevant. And a lot of Death Grips fans originally came from like those types of boards. A lot of people who I wouldn't say originally uh, for me at like I was doing my thing for like a couple years or at least like, you know, well over a year. And then um, as I was kind of gaining a following, then some people on that board started talking about my content, you know, sort of like mentioning me over and over and over. And I, I still get mentioned there now. Um, but, uh, you know, there was definitely like a lot of pull, you know, coming from that board at the time for uh, Death Grips, for a lot of the stuff that I was doing as well. So it was like definitely a strong community and, you know, like a pretty strong like influence as far as like underground and indie, you know, indie music went. Um, I don't know how much sway it ultimately has uh, in the grander scheme of things now that everything is sort of like broadened and diversified and changed and evolved in the ways that it has with just like the sheer number of platforms out there. Like when you talk about things like, I don't know, the indie subreddit, the hip hop head subreddit, which have like tons and tons of followers. Like you have to consider that around that time, those boards either didn't exist or didn't have the followings that they did. You know, it's like, it's, it's only been over time that they've kind of grown in terms of their influence and their platform. And, you know, I mean, those Reddit platforms are now sort of like being overtaken by music communities on other apps and, you know, other uh, uh, platforms. So, you know, there, there's, it's an essential part of the Death Grip sort of canon. They originally, um, even in, in sort of like the earlier portion of their career around like the no love deep web era, there was like this really weird, like digital Easter egg hunt that the band sent fans on, uh, to ultimately, I think get a hold of or download like an instrumental version of an, of an album. Mm -hmm. And, uh, a lot of what happened over the course of, you know, that whole like Easter egg hunt, uh, all of it was like cracked and discovered through 4chan, you know, like through the music board specifically. So there was definitely like a really strong contingent of fans over there that were like engaged in underground music, engaged in Death Grips music. Um, now, of course, because it is 4chan, there's like a huge like, you know, level of toxicity associated with any and all of it. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, like that history about it is undeniable. Uh, but simultaneously, like, you know, uh, the, the, there was a contingent of people there that, uh, you know, were just like really huge into death grips. And, you know, well, there was a lot of uh, passion for music generally and a lot of creativity there. But again, all of that is kind of broadened out and kind of shifted on other platforms. And if you want to engage in that kind of weirdo music shit, you don't have to do it there anymore. It can be in other places. Wow. So that's where it all started. Yeah. I mean, in part. You know, it was like a huge part of the uh, ball rolling and everything, you know. Um, I mean, of course, like if you go back in time, there's like other boards like Hippinion, for example. They were like a huge hipster music board and some pitchfork writers used to frequent there back in the day. And, um, you know, th there'd, there'd be a lot of hip music discussions there, too. And that was actually one of my almost like your... Um, chopped and screwed situation that was like my first uh exposure to negativity because yeah. like you know some people were just kind of randomly reposting some of my earliest reviews there. this was like 29 like this was like 2009 maybe 2010 and um 
you know, it was just like nothing but just like people shitting on me for just like, you know, comment after comment after comment. And I remember when I got started, like the sentiment was always like, he's just pitchfork with a camera. Get the fuck off the YouTube. You're just pitchfork with a camera. What do you try to do? Pitchfork with a camera, blah, 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 blah. And, um, you know, again, as I was kind of saying earlier, uh, you know, take, take my advice and just kind of understand that like uh, one person will say an insult and someone will think it's funny or a bunch of people will kind of latch onto it and it'll just get repeated until you just kind of overcome it and you just kind of transcend it. And then eventually there'll be another insult and that'll get repeated again and again and again. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, your pitch work with a camera, blah, 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 uh, hairline, blah, 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 blah. Uh, 35 years old, blah, 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 blah. You know, there, there's always something. So it, it, it'll just get repeated until it dies out and then it'll get replaced with something else that people think will kind of get at you. But yeah, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, like as far as like um, image board culture goes, like there's definitely, you know, an integral part that that played in the popularity and kind of mythos of of death grips because, you know, I, I think it makes sense and it's uh, um just part of the history because, you know, the whole point of death grips early on was to engage in sort of like this underbelly of the web, Mm -hmm. you know, and you can't really in the early 2010s have a discussion about the underbelly of the web or make art influenced by the underbelly of the web and just sort of like ignore the elephant in the room of 4chan. 4chan is like, you know, one of the many underbellies of the web. Um, that people are sort of plugged into. So, you know, again, you can't really make that art or have that conversation without like either that engagement with it or that assessment of it or that, uh, uh, you know, reference to it. (laughs) I, listen, I hate to do this to you, but can I ask you another death grips question? Yes. yes. It's, 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 this is really funny because, um, I, I presume because of how long I've been listening to Death Grips and, and I see other people getting into Death Grips, even though they are m- like much younger than me, that, that they know all this stuff already or they understand all this stuff already or whatever. But if the, like, but ask, go ahead. I just like want to know because I've, I'll never forget the first time I heard Death Grips and, and where it went from there. Like, can you like, do you remember like the first time you ever listen to death grips like what how you felt like what like that moment yeah i mean i I was thinking about this a lot when i did my ex-military video and Mm. honestly like death grips then uh specifically the money store like sounded like how the internet is now like (laughs) i feel like all of it was just like very predictive of and at at the time I, i i guess like what i could say is that it felt like this is the direction things are going in. And when I say that, I don't mean uh, 10 years from now, all music's going to sound like this. No, that, that's not what I mean. Like, it feels like this is the direction things are going in culturally, whereas mm. everything is so digital and dirty and broken and like vile aesthetically. Um, yeah. I feel like culturally, that's where everything was headed because, you know, Death Grips was sort of like, born out of a really, you know, ugly world. And I feel like what they were presenting was just like, you know, an online version of that, mm-hmm. you know, because you, you have to consider that before that, you know, when you're talking about like late nineties, uh, early to mid two thousands, um, portrayals of the internet, like everything was displayed to us as uh, you know almost as like um unironically like the same way uh you know vaporwave is i mean you you wonder you know you've listened to vaporwave you've seen your fair share of covers i mean vaporwave is 100 inspired by all of those aesthetics but that was like you know the reality that we were like being sold is like children that were being introduced to classrooms that like had computers or like um and even if they were shitty computers you know it was sort of like don't worry you know i know the computers may suck now but like into the future look at this amazing photo of like this uh uh, i guess uh what i want to say is uh um uh sanitized you know like pure white glass plastic world where there's no problems and everything's just solved by 
computers and I don't know what, nobody works anymore because the computers just do everything. All you do is come into work and you just push a button and everything's okay. like all good and, and all of that. You know, that was sort of like the technological utopia that we were like sold on and computers were going to bring it to us. And, you know, it was going to be Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and they had the keys to the castle and it was just going to be great and it was going to be amazing. And, um, you know, the more online everyone got and the more, you know, accessible all of this stuff became, um, the more bleak things started to look. And, you know, uh, it seemed, you know, I, I grew up during a time when we we had hopes of like what into by the time I'm uh, in my 30s we're gonna have flying cars, you know. It's yeah. like you know I grew up I grew up with Back to the Future you know one and two, like the, mm -hmm. you know everything's gonna be uh, uh, like hovering and everything, <laughs> and it's like you know uh, we're we're just gonna be talking to each other like in video chat like this like you know like that it's it's not gonna be a thing it's gonna be amazing and yeah we we got like little to none of that stuff and in a lot of ways like shit sucks even worse now and it, it, you know especially like with my generation hitting its twenties and its thirties um, you know sort of realizing how economically bleak things were going to be for many of us in the coming years and uh, that's not looking at uh, much better for you guys by the way um, <laughs> but but you know death grips for me was sort of like the the in, the introduction to that idea that like yeah things are getting more digital and things are getting more online but like yeah this this new world is just as shit as the old one and this is like our shitty dark horrible kind of portrayal of of that um so there was that element of it that's what it sounded like it sounded like that's where things were going it sounded like mm -hmm. that's where the world was going you know it sounded very like what cyberpunk 77 would be you know um or you know 2077 whatever the fuck I don't, I don't fucking play that game um yeah, yeah but, but like but like you know it was like the musical prequel to to all of that mm -hmm. um and uh, you know on top of that it, on top of it it was just like just so amazing to hear something like so loud and so crushing and so manic. Um, and, and I think, uh, you know, it was also sort of refreshing as somebody who grew up during an era of new metal to mm. hear like, you know, the, the, um, idea of like rock and hip hop coming together in, in a certain way. And, you know, that was sort of like it, it at least for a time, a total bust, a cultural red herring, and immediately after it was over, everyone regretted having anything to do with it, and, you know, we just, like, tried to forget it as much as possible. And, you know, from that point on, you know, sort of just, like, rock and hip-hop just sort of, like, separated, and it was just, like, you know, we like, these things need to sort of remain in their own lanes and stay pure to whatever they're doing, and just you know, stick to that. And then, you know, I, I feel like, um, uh, uh, n artists like Rico nasty, obviously have sort of like, you know, broken the walls back in the other direction in really creative ways. But before that, you know, it's like death grips almost in, in, in its own way said, no, you know what? Fuck that. Like we're going to bring this punk aesthetic back into a hip hop sound and we're going to, you know, go so far with it that people aren't even going to identify it as hip hop necessarily off the bat. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, so, you know, that, that was kind of the other side of the coin that, that was so amazing, you know, hearing it for the first time and, and hearing it for the first time and uh, not really having heard anything else like it at the time too. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Like none of that went through my head when I first listened to it. I was in a car at PJ wheel of hands on wing night. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they were so packed so we had to go to ihop and on the way to ihop my friend grace put on no love and the the intro hit and i was like man what song is this and she was like it's death grips no love and then all i'd heard was the intro before we got there and then i was like oh, i'm gonna go listen to this song on my way home and then i listened to it and then like the verse came in and i was like oh this is dip okay i didn't know it was gonna go here and then like i just got i was like wow this is like because at first i was like i wasn't sure if i liked the rest of the song but mm. i i just like couldn't like i 
just couldn't stop going back to it. I was like, wow, this is so cool. And then I just started listening to the other stuff and I was like, damn, like, and, and, now, and, and what, and what year was that? This was 20, I would like to say 2017, 16. Okay. So like a, so much of their discography was like already out by then. Yeah, I was, yeah, I like, I wish if oh I wish I would have known about them earlier so that no, I could honestly, have exciting to me in its own way because like you found a really? new artist and they already have this huge back catalog of like well I could try anything you know what I mean? yeah. whereas like uh, at the time when the money store came out you know I loved the money store but it's like you got to sit there and fucking wait obviously they didn't make you wait too long because like for so long they were just dropping an album year after year after year after year. But like, but still you've got to sit there and like, wait and be like, when's the next thing dropping? You know what I mean? Whereas oh my like, God. Yeah. If you're starting I, in 2017, yeah. you could just like binge it all. That's true. But like, I, I didn't, I never got to see them live and it breaks my heart because I think I probably would have like cried tears of joy. Like I've always wanted to see them live. I've always wanted to see MC Ride right there. I saw you, I think you did like something a while ago where you were talking about how you met MC Ride and he smiled and said, thank you. <laughs> it was, I don't a, know it was, what a, I would it was do. a sweet moment. It was a sweet moment. I don't know what I would do if he, I saw MC Ride and he just smiled and thanked me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd faint. Like, I don't know how you held it together. Well, you know, honestly, like as as a as a content creator with your own platform, you've you've got to make those own moments for yourself. You've you've got to find your yeah. death grips and just like blow that up, and then yeah. and then have you have your own MC ride moment. You know, being someone who's growing up in this environment, and this will be the last thing I ask because you know we, we've been going on for quite a bit, and and I, I and I do enjoy the fact that this discussion's been been going very well. But um, you know, what, what, what do you think all this hyperactivity is doing in your brain? as a young person. I mean, just as somebody who's like, you know, um, watching from the outside, uh, you know, just like through the TikTok platform. I mean, I think about like being a musician myself and being a music fan myself, the stuff that I knew when I was like 16, 17, 18, mm -hmm. which like in comparison with like a terminally online teenager in 2022, 2021 is like jack shit. <laughs> because like, you know, like I, I go on TikTok and I see dudes, girls, uh, non-binary folks talking about like noise rock bands I didn't know about until I was 25. And mm -hmm. in their comments, they're talking about fucking suspended chords. And I'm just <laughs> like, I didn't, I knew none of this until like years down the road. I'm just like thinking, what are you going to know when you're 30? You know, and, and, and by that point, my brain's going to be rotted out. You know, it's like, I'll just be like, just drooling on myself and being like, <laughs> uh, I, I'll just be drooling on myself. The last synapses in my brain are just going to be going, I'm getting ripped tonight. No, I, oh, hey. <laughs> has, has, has anyone done that? The MC ride impression with I'm getting ripped tonight. Has, has anyone done that yet? Do I need to do, do I need no, to go I on TikTok and do to, that? I think you should do that right after this. <laughs> <I do that laughs> I'm getting ripped tonight. No, I, yeah. <laughs> Oh but, my God. but again, do, do, do you think all of this like exposure that you're getting to other perspectives, media, music, everything, because it's all just like flying at you at a speed that I could have never conceived when I was 12. Do you think that's ultimately a good thing, a bad thing? Honestly, I don't know. Personally, I think it really depends because I mean, there was a point in my life where like, I only had internet friends. Like mm. all of the people I talked to, like weren't just from my hometown. They were just from like all these different places. And I think in like that sense, it's really cool that like, you know, yeah, there's a lot of different perspectives like coming at you, but like you can have a conversation about it with like a person, you know what I mean? But like when it's on the internet and you're just like reading people's thoughts and like, it's, it's harder to sort of like engage in like, a conversation I feel like online um, like because it's like you know not only can you like not read people's tones as easily when you're writing it down but it's just like you know I feel like pe when you're just reading opinions it's like easier to just soak it in and be like yep that's that's my opinion now but 
like I don't know. It really depends. Hold on, let me let me, I, let me let's let me stare into the camera as you say that. Because that's, <laughs> that's that's for that's for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, but go but go on. I just you know I think it's in that sense it's not that good because it would be nice if like people form their own opinions. That'd be really cool. Yeah, I I, th I think that's a pretty valid point that there's sort of like. A, a, a width to the variety of things that you could be exposed to than, than ever before, but it's really easy to just sort of like only get the most surface level exposure or understanding to just about any and all of it, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like the internet also gives you the power to almost like in an OCD way, just like dive into something just like so, so deep that you're in a rabbit hole that you never kind of pull yourself out of. Um, but that just like requires an insane amount of dedication, but, and, and also I think a lot of effort probably offline as well. Um, because, you know, to learn about anything, there's gotta be a point at which like you kind of turn the computer off and just like go physically apply it, you know, or try to actually execute it in some way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you would hope so <laughs> it's, yeah, it's really interesting. It's just like. It's an interesting question because I feel like I'm so used to like the internet. Like I've been on it since sixth grade. I had a Facebook. Sure. So it's, mm. I feel like it's sort of subconscious that this is just like how I, how I, how we all do things. Like I think it's so like, it's so interesting. Like you didn't always have the internet. Yeah. There was a, a certainly a golden age where that just was not the case. Or, you know, and, and, and the point at which I did, like, you didn't have the kind of communication capabilities that you have now. I mean, you know, it's uh, some of my first exposure to music online was uh, illegally downloading songs at like, you know, uh, uh, maybe a 96K bit rate and it would take half an hour to, d to download them. You know, you'd set that you set the download like overnight and then, you know, you'd wake up in the morning and then some of the downloads would have failed, but then, you know, some of them would have gone through and then you <laughs> can listen, wow. listen to, can listen to, yeah, for, for single songs, for single tracks. Audio, no video. No video, no video. That's nuts. No video, but, but over some of those platforms, you could download videos, but the grainiest fucking video, you like the grainiest, smallest, most disgustingly revolution, vi like resolution video. <laughs> <laughs> like a, like just just for like a 30 second South Park clip or something, wow. you know what I mean? Just just to watch a really bad 30 second clip of like a season one South Park episode. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, so, wow, not a cell phone in sight. Not not a, a, a <laughs> at, le at least not a one with a screen anyway, you know, just like a really chunky Nokia phone, you know, with snake on it, with with the snake game on it. Oh, the snake game. Yeah. Yes. So the, anyway, uh, I'm. Yeah. Uh, th th thank you for tuning into this episode of I'm Old uh, <laughs> with Dev Lemons. This has been great. Um, thank you for coming through and just talking about the internet and everything else. So we appreciate your time. And again, we're going to link to Song Psych and everything down below. Check out Dev Lemons on YouTube. Check out Dev Lemons on TikTok. And uh, keep educating us about music theory and, and everything else. Thank you so much. And check out Anthony Fantano on TikTok. Check me out there too. He's cool on there. I don't care what anyone says. I think <laughs> I think your TikTok <laughs> funny all the time. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm over there to have conversations too. But but like you with your second accounts and your third account, I'm, I'm there to bullshit. I'm there to just like, <laughs> I'm there to blow off steam. I'm there to do whatever the hell and just be ridiculous. You know, there you go. yeah, it's just it's just like a really easy and gratifying place to shit post, you it, know, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay. It is. Honestly, I, I get more gratification shit posting there than than on YouTube sometimes. All right. Well, have a good one again. Thank you for coming through and uh, we will follow you on Song Psych and everywhere else. And uh, we'll see you later. Oh, thank you for having me, please. All right. Bye. Thanks. Bye.